right. Let's check it out now. Excellent connection. If it's not an excellent connection, then we're going to have a problem. I could also put filters, um, render delay. Is it? Should be good this time. What's up, dudes? This is always the fun way to start out a VOD. <laughs> ah, nobody watches them anyways. I got to let my mic kind of charge a little bit, too. So, there's, uh, there's two little differences. There's, you can run off of CPU or GPU for rendering your stream. Uh, the difference is pretty substantial. And I changed the bit rate. I had the bit rate, what I, what I didn't know is that I had the bit rate crank super high last time. So we brought that down a little bit uh, to what all the platforms recommend you stream at. Like this is the max you should stream at. And I was like 40% above it. So, I don't know. I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure all this out. I know it's, it's been a year, but I swear. There's so many things that you do on the back end just to try and make your stream work. And then it's like you look at it afterwards and you're like, why are there still these issues? And it's just an ongoing, it's an ongoing thing. Stream quality is good. The future is vast. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is. Uh, I got a 21 F350 hotshot truck full and two WRXs today. Dang, you got a fun day today. Have fun with those quarters. So hopefully this will at least run a little bit more consistent. Uh, we got some work today. We got an edge. We got an edge. Also, I don't think we've been streaming to Facebook, and I didn't realize it. Like, the group? The group is always something I want to stream to, and I think it just wasn't working. I haven't been seeing the post, and I'm like, wait, I should be here. I should be in my own group. What, what the heck? Tool belt, I want to buy one. Where do I go? No, you can't have it. It's mine. Uh, it's, it's an Avery Dennison tool belt. So some Avery Denison distributors have it, but the, the, the little problem is uh, it's technically a vinyl wrapping product, so they only have it at their vinyl distributors, last I heard. Maybe they stock it at some tint ones um, at this point. But yeah, Fellers, good job. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, get it. Fellers has it. It is working now, I guess, from Facebook. But I figured it had just always been working. It's dumb. Dumb that it wasn't. This is... We're going to be here for a couple years, though. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we'll figure this out. All right. I got to get started. Because what? It was a 10 o'clock drop-off. We've already burned an hour. Oh, my God. I swear. This is, this is the thing about streaming, man. It's like you set yourself up. Like you have all the time in the world up to the appointment. And then you think you have everything. And then the car gets here. And then it's just like, I don't have anything ready. And now here we are. So we're going to just go get started because we have actual work to do. Actually. I almost lost my phone. So I got a new phone. Um, and uh, it turns out it's broken. <laughs> yeah, it hopped off the network and never connected again. 
And I had, oh god, what a fucking nightmare that was. Oh, we forgot to put up a balloon, too. That fucker blew up. So there was somebody that super chatted last time. And then at the end of the stream, like, no joke, I was doing some touch-ups, and then the balloon just exploded. That was fucking terrifying. Just out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. It was just sitting there full. So note to self, if we ever get to that point where it looks like it's going to explode, we, we got to make it explode. Or it's not going to survive. It's just going to just going to stretch out and blow up. All right. All right, dudes. We have that. We have our super duper microphone that we got to also clip somewhere in here. I should have done this before, I think. Something like that because we have upgraded. Do I play any video games? No, I not really. I used to. They need to make another Skyrim. The, that I, I got lost in that game. I, I played that game for so long. And then there's, there hasn't, there's been like shooter games like it, but oh, I want that again. Okay. Uh, GoPro. Dang it. Recognized. Done. Well, this should work. Hey, T-Jet with a five. Light fund. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, that's going to go into the camera fund. <laughs> I have another one. That's, it's actually on the way. It's going to be here before Christmas. Whoa! There it is. There's the alert. Thank you so much for the $5. I really appreciate that. GoPro, webcam. What the heck, dude? Oh, oh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I know, I know, hang on. You have to run it as an administrator. Go. Always something, always something with the stream. All right, magic trick. GoPro, GoPro. Ha! Thank God. I'm just going to have to continuously run every program that I open in administrator mode. I found that out, or at least I was told that with, uh, with OBS. I came across a video, finally, that was like, always run OBS in, in administrator mode. I was like, what the heck? Nobody's ever said that before in any video that I've come across. I watch like a bajillion streaming videos. And then finally I decided to watch some about bitrate. And then they just casually slid that in there and I was like, oh my God, that makes a lot of sense. It makes a ton of sense. Just something that I never really thought of. You guys think tinning's the hard part. Tinning's the easy part, man. Running everything else is <laughs> mental gymnastics. So there is one big concern, actually getting into tinning now, there is one big concern about this windshield, and I'm about to show you guys. Big, 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 big concern. You guys ever have just like, Ugh, like everything's supposed to be fine, right? And then there's just like, you just didn't do that one thing and then all of a sudden you're just like, oh, oh. So it's raining like crazy 
outside right now. So it's two, two doors and a full windshield. So we don't have a ton of stuff to do on this. Oh, that fell. But you see this? See this? I don't know if you can, but there's a big, there's a big, big chip. There's a chip here, and then there's a crack that goes all the way up to here and down to here. And that's what I'm really worried about. I'm worried that that's going to spider worse. But they're definitely aware of it. It's literally in the driver's line of sight. So it's just one of those things like I don't want, I, I'm not going to turn, a, I don't want to turn away a full windshield just because of that. Like if they want to get it done, I'm not going to tell them they can't get it done. It's just kind of like, oh man, that sucks. Getting a full windshield tinted and then likely to spider in the near future. Could be wrong. Maybe they, maybe it's filled and whatnot, but I don't know. Issues. Issues. All right. So we're gonna take off this mirror. This, there's two Ford mirrors. So this is the only type of Ford mirror other than, I get. well, no, no, now there's three. Now they put a screw, like every other smart company. But on, on pretty much everything Ford for mirrors for a very long time, there was only two types of mirrors. There was the ones that were okay to pull off, and then there was the fuck you mirrors. So we actually have an okay mirror on this one. They're really easy to tell the difference. What is the name of this tape? Uh, this is my own little dealie. Uh, it's called Glass Aid. It should have more of a name because I call the clay bars Glass Aid too. But does anybody really care? <laughs> Uh, so what I use this for, because I don't really talk about it unless I'm asked. Um, so I stripe the outside of the border and then I cut on it. So it's different from pinstriping because it's much thicker. So you're not digging your blade into the glass at all. It's something I do on every back window and every windshield on or off stream. I'm always using it because this, solved, this is literally something I made to solve my own problem. When I'm running around to another shop, most places don't have glass boards for you to cut patterns out on unless they're a dedicated tint shop. But this is also just convenient for people who also are not using plotters. But even if you're using a plotter, oh wait, we have it, we have it up here. Even if you're using a plotter, it's just not one of those things that, uh, windshields are so-so are <laughs> on plotters anyways. So a lot of times you have to just, you either cut on the glass, use a Sharpie, use a button, or you can use this. I like this because you just line the window, you can see it underneath. So it makes up some time and it keeps everything safe. But I will go over this. Uh, I will go over this mirror too. They're pretty easy to pull. I used to do it a more dangerous way. 
I have been since taught a much safer way. So, I've already pulled this because I like to sometimes, my high risk things, I like to try and take care of sometimes before I go live. So I did actually pull this off, but I'll show you exactly how I did it. So mainly because I was worried about that right there, that chip. So what you're gonna do is like, you have a couple different types of Ford mirrors. You have this one here, which is just like more of a, a rounded shape. And then you have the one that like comes out a little bit wider and then has a little, uh, it has a little like clip basically here that's going to like bind against this bottom part and you'd have to push that down to pop it. But they're very, very tight. These ones are much easier to pull. So all you have to do is take a little flathead screwdriver, get yourself a small one, put it underneath the mirror and you're going to just lightly pry this metal part past the tab and then it'll just slide off the way i used to do it was just grab it and yank down um that works some most of the time until you get yourself a cheap windshield and then all of a sudden you'll pull a piece of glass straight out of the windshield. I've done it twice. I've broken two windshields just yanking on those. So I have never broken a windshield by just taking a screwdriver, lightly prying down. You're pressing on the tab instead of uh, yanking on the glass. So be gentle. <laughs> all right, we need keys. We need a place to hang keys, but there's a lot going on here. <laughs> uh, I know you stream from multiple platforms. What's the best one to comment on? I get comments from all of them. Uh, YouTube is where everybody hangs out. So if I miss your comment, it's not because I like, it might just be because I'm talking and other people also ask comments and sometimes I just end up missing something. But yeah, I can absolutely talk about the floor. Hey, T-Jet. T-Jet with the three. Equalizer uh, multi-mirror tool is the GOAT. Thank you so much for the three. I have like the chunky white block, but I, I don't think I've ever successfully got like used it. So I should probably look into it a little bit more. If you could post a video or something in the group, that would be super helpful explaining how you use it and how it works for you. Because I, I've, I've seen the block, I've seen a bunch of different Ford mirror tools. They even have this really expensive vise. And I just keep hearing that sometimes they work and sometimes they just, they break windshields. So most people just tend to stay away from them at this point. Um, I'll always pull these types of mirrors, but the other ones I just, I just don't mess with. Just ask the customers if the, ever they replace the shields, um, the China shit will break for sure. Yeah, especially like when, if it's factory glass, you're a little bit better, but yeah, if it, they have aftermarket ones, I've pulled pieces of glass straight out of the windshield. Not fun. All right, we're gonna try it again. We're gonna try it. GoPro, GoPro. Wah! Yeah, that's, that's been my experience too. It's been too, it's been too thick to like fit underneath. I've had that same problem. So, I don't know, man. I think they're different, 
pressures too. I think some of them are okay, and some of them are just tighter. Oh wait, this is an edge. I think this is one of the only front doors where a 36 is too wide. Where's the balloon today? I honestly just forgot to put it up there. I'm sorry. <laughs> the air compressor is still working. Maybe this will work. Oh, maybe it's just wide enough. Okay. All right, we're just wide enough. So if I don't have a short roll, if I don't have a short roll, I'll take a 36 inch and put it sideways. What's my worst tin experience? Oh, there's been a lot of them. I think the worst is when you actually damage something and then it just like kills your entire day. So I had like a Subaru BRZ and I scratched the fuck out of one of the windows when I was prepping it. So I was using a plastic scraper and a piece of dirt got on it and the scraper was a little old. And I put all these swipe marks into it. Well, uh, one of those windows isn't necessarily that bad to replace, but at the place that that happened, uh, it was very bad. So obviously the customer is going to want OEM glass because it's a pretty new car. And the shop was a more expensive place. So they didn't replace the glass themselves, they contract somebody to come in. That cost me $550 to get replaced. One, one window, $550, everything was on me. And that really bites, especially when like everybody else is getting a cut out of your job, right? So the shop gets a cut out of your job. The company that was middleman got a, a cut out of every job. And then I'm the one that's covering 100% of all of my like, potential damages. <laughs> like, fuck me, dude. I was, I was pretty bitter about that one. So those usually suck like the most. Generally, damage has always been from being careless, but when you're put in situations where it's hard to be careful, uh, like, you know, they stack like five cars and they just want you to get shit done, right? Like, you don't have time to be all that careful. And then one of those mistakes can absolutely take away your entire day. Like, that, that sucks. And then the other one was really just like, I felt time wasting. I think that was like, doing, doing mobile for shops was like some of my most frustrating days because I would like, I'd have to drive like 30 minutes to a shop, 40 minutes to another shop, and here and there appointments would just not show up and I still would have driven and waited. And then like sometimes they show up late and then I have another appointment to go run to. And it's like that kind of stuff really got frustrating and old very quickly. But positive note from all that, um, under a card. So positive note from all of that, uh, I got frustrated to the point where I got, I, I forced myself to get mad at myself because I put myself in that situation. I'm letting other people 
waste my time. And I don't want to be in that situation anymore. So then I started building things where I'm in charge of my time and I need to have other things to do. So I'm not letting other people waste my time anymore. That was probably like the biggest ones. <laughs> what? Marquise Brownlee, your average consumer, Linus Tech Tips, Unbox Therapy, Austin Evans, Jonathan Morris, John Rettinger, Mr. Who's the Boss. Those are all, yeah, those are the, like the top tech channels. Those are all good. I mostly watch Linus. A little bit of Mr. Who's the Boss now. Uh, Unbox, oh, I'm so jealous from Unbox's studio. That's what I wanted, that's what I wanted to make. He did the whole Batman studio. I love it. That's what I wanted to do here. Uh, GoPro. GoPro. One day, one day, I, I'm going to do the same thing. The truck was stolen? Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I've been a part of, no, 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 that sounds wrong. I have not been a part of that. I have been at a shop where somebody who actually worked for the shop stole the, stole the shop truck. Yeah, so we're doing 20% on the back, and then we're going to do 35 on the windshield, which at this point I almost forgot. How does the floor work with uh, a rolling stool? So I'm, I'm sad that I don't have one of those little roller stools, but you're better off with bigger wheels. I have an office chair and it will roll, but it's not smooth. And it, it's like, so get bigger wheels. Like what I would suggest is probably bigger caster wheels. The wider the, the base of those wheels, the less it's gonna, it's gonna groove. The cheap little stools, like just upgrade the wheels. Or get yourself a better stool. We took off the panels and there was white baggies. <laughs> well, you might have saved it. Just leaving all the panels on, you wash everything away. All right, so being that we cut these out sideways, we now have to shrink them sideways. So this is the top. The sides are now the top and bottom. I just noticed the rear wiper was going. So, it's still, like, shrinking on the side works. But you'll notice, like, this isn't as, uh, as long as this edge down here. So you can get a lot more out right on this bottom edge. So I'll shrink on the sides, and I'll get most of the stuff out, but sometimes I still have something that pops up on the bottom. And it really just depends on the window that I'm shrinking.
I have pretty much determined that I need two setups. I need one that stays here and never changes. It's getting to be too much. I have to pack up my stuff and leave, and then I have to unpack it for here. And it's not that long, but it's easily taking like an extra 20 minutes of time. So it's like 15 to 20 minutes to like unpack and then 15 to 20 minutes to like pack all back up. And then I keep forgetting stuff because I put them on shelves. So we're gonna have to just have a dedicated outfit for here. It's time. It's time. So that's sh shrinking. A little bit on that side. Don't over curl it because you'll make installation a pain in the ass. But just try and do what you can. These are the main fingers to shrink out. But this took me a little while to get used to as well. But that's pretty much it. I don't do a lot on the sides, just enough. Just enough to, to prevent horrific issues. So you only have mild ones to deal with on the inside. If I could split this roll vertically, I would have though. Use a shorter roll if possible. But sometimes you just don't have them. Okay, so this guy here. everything. These seals are pretty easy going. There we go. We haven't refilled our bottle, so I'm hoping, ooh, ooh, that right there. There's like a little bit of schmutz from the seal and the age, age of the windows. So let's scrape those off. So if I start coming across stuff that looks like it's stuck to the window, then I'll go, I'll scrape it. If I don't see anything that's obviously stuck to the window, you're typically okay with just a light scrape, clay bar scrub down, squeegee, and install. I like keeping my clay bars warm, especially in the winter time. Mostly exclusively in the winter time. deal. Where did I get the plastic from? Uh, that was from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. They both carry it. Or Menards. That would be advanced level 10 plus years. <laughs> I know a few things. 
There's still those cars that make me feel like I don't know anything, though. Because what, like, it's... What I get most of the time is, like, new leases... Most like, so I get Audi, BMW, Ford, GM, Chrysler. Not a ton of Toyota, not a ton of Subaru, not a ton of like Honda. A decent amount of Audi. Oh, and VW for sure. With the flooring, do you have to worry about anything that falls down there? I don't worry about it, but what you'll have to do, or what you what you should do, so this, this depends on the, your flooring actually underneath it. So, I like this flooring because like you're walking over the water and you're walking over the dirt. So there isn't much you can do. Like you really can't sweep it. It just, everything falls in those slots and it'll sit there. So after about a year, like depending on how long you want to wait, probably about a year, you're gonna wanna pull the flooring out and then clean underneath it. That's just been what I've like come across videos. And it's really easy to pull out and then uh, reinstall. So no worries there. It's not as, it's a little time consuming to make sure everything's in place. But once you set it up the first time, you can remove it in gigantic chunks and it pops apart pretty simply. And then just clean underneath it, give your floors a nice scrub at, scrub down, rinse out, and then just enjoy not cleaning your floors for the next year. If you have water that sits underneath though and doesn't drain, that could be an issue. So if you're tinning, if you're tinning a lot of cars every day, Tinning a lot of cars every day um, is gonna make a lot of stagnant water. And if you're in an area that's got like a lot of humidity and things don't dry, um, you're, not, you're never giving your floor a chance to dry. So imagine like you just pulled your car in like your own garage uh, and it was raining outside. You're not like constantly putting more water. But if you're, if you're like detailing and spraying and all this other stuff and lots of water and stuff, it's just, it might not be the floor for you. The floor here doesn't drain. But it's, uh, it still stays pretty decent because it's like I'm not tinning as many cars here I'm still giving it, like I give it quite a bit of time in between tint jobs, depending on what's going on. Does the flooring shift? It can. It, it can shift, it has shifted. And then sometimes I've shifted it back God, what is wrong with my chat? Not you guys. So there's something wrong with my chat program right now, I'm noticing. It's like rereading me comments that it's already read. That's a, that's a different problem.
God, it's really going back a while now. All right, so this one went pretty well. I might have to close this and reopen it. Oh my god. One second. Uh, cannon. There we go. All right. You guys might hear, you guys might hear a robot voice for a second. I don't know why it's doing that. Though. That's really obnoxious. It's like taking the last messages from my chat over like the past 10 minutes and rereading all of them. Over? So that was really funky. It should be okay now though. I'm late, do you mind starting over? Yeah, sure, it's fine. That's fine. Should be good. You guys might have heard a robot voice for like a second. But I have it like, once it picks up where the audio is coming from, it redirects it to my headset. What do I do to advertise? Uh, this. This is a big part of, oh, oh, GoPro, GoPro. What do I do to advertise? Uh, this is actually a big part of what I do. So all the streams, they're run on Facebook, and they're also, or sorry, they're run on YouTube, and they're also run on my business Facebook page. And then I got a buddy helping me out with postings, so he keeps it busy. Um, that's been okay. It hasn't, it hasn't done like a ton for business over the past couple months, honestly. Wow. It did it again. It did it again. <laughs> How do you deal with customers that cancel on you? Uh, personally, I ask for deposits. If You don't have to ask it from absolutely everybody. But if I've never, if I've never had a, a particular client before and they're scheduling, like if we're scheduling a couple days in advance, I'll typically ask for a deposit. Oh! Huh. All right. Huh, this is, uh, this is something I've never done before but I think I'm gonna have to do it. Um, I guess the, no. This really sucks. So my chat program is absolutely broken right now. And I hope this doesn't kill the stream, but it is driving me batshit crazy. So we're gonna uninstall, and we're gonna actually reinstall the latest version, and hopefully that fixes it. This is not something that I wanted to do. But it, so it'll read like the most recent messages, and then it'll go back and keep reading much farther. Notifications. 
Is that plastic similar to food wrap? No, it's nothing uh, like mid steam tech fixes. Made for for like carpet and surfaces you want to keep safe. Nothing like midstream tech difficulties. I know. Okay, now we've got that. Now we gotta make sure that it's actually streaming. It's directing the audio to only my headset. Which would be kind of spectacular if it just, where is it? Do you guys hear a robot voice? Oh no, it actually directed it to the right place. There it is. Okay, that's cool. Maybe it's working now. It's not repeating anything. I literally just uninstalled it and reinstalled it and it looks like, looks like it's fine. It's fine. Have you ever had trouble shrinking Honda Civic windshields? Uh, maybe. It's tough to be that specific with like, I don't really remember Honda Civic windshield being difficult, but if you're having problems, then it's obviously like an issue for you. Some are more curved, some are less curved. There aren't really that many normal cars that stand out as being like ultra difficult. So it's just, you gotta practice on your shrinking. We'll do the windshield on here though, so we can give you some, some tips, bro. Canon. No, wrong one. GoPro. GoPro. Ha. All right. So we're still, we're still working. We're just. <laughs> this is the robot speaking. I'm becoming self-aware. That's okay because Robot, can you please uh, make things work more better, please? That would be great, thanks. Do, do something good. <laughs> it just reminds me of like a random little story. There's a, like my wife's family, they have like a, a small like shed house thingy in the back. And then like my wife's mom uh, swears that it's haunted, right? And then thinks like, thinks that it's haunted and that it messed it, it messed up the, the place, like threw stuff around and it's like, okay, well just go tell it to clean it up. Come on, ghost, be helpful. <laughs> Why do they always gotta be terrorizing? Like, come on, helpful, let's go. Come on, you live here, clean your shit up. Go make me a sandwich. I would, if I had this stuff to make one. I'll also, I'd also appreciate one too. So that's fine. It appears that we fixed it though. So whatever issue we were having, it's not happening right now. And if it does happen, um, I'm gonna have to switch over to Streamlabs. And that's gonna be more problems. Fuck me, dude. <sighs> Streamlabs, I think, is cheaper, but I gotta check to see if they have a text-to-speech chat aggregator and work with Facebook. You know, small things like that. I think somebody asked me earlier what I used for streaming. Um, I use Restream.io. It's a good, good, good platform. It costs 50 a month. Worth it. I just wish I could make a better sounding robot voice. I'd rather have the Brian voice instead of Microsoft Sam. Can I make a video? Uh, no. 
Not at the moment. It's kind of like we're in, we're in streaming mode. So if something comes up on stream, that's that's the way we handle it. We're not making as many did it. We're not really making any dedicated videos at this time. Um, I'm still like I go back and forth. I don't know what to do about video on my channel. So. I'm not sure if I should stream to a separate channel, but the problem is I went to stream on my main channel, and that's, that's all we've been doing for the past year. So I think one of the best ways to handle your channel with streaming is to like stream to one if you stream more regularly, stream to one channel and do VODs on another channel. And then direct everybody from the VODs to watch the stream. Because that's going to be a more condensed... That's going to be a most, more condensed uh, audience. So... I don't know. I don't know. I'm low-key a little jealous of everybody that has a Twitch. Because they're always like, go watch me on Twitch. And it's like, ah, they already have it separate and they have their Twitch audience built. But I don't like Twitch. Well, like, Twitch is cool, but like, long term. Shout hashtag what? Why? Is our chat messing up again? Or we just have spammers in the chat? Because I'm pretty sure it's doing the same thing it was doing. Clay bars on the back glass? Yes, absolutely. Do, do they help with glue removal? Not as much. Spammers in chat? Okay, we'll take care of them. Dang. Are we getting bigger? Are we getting bigger to the point where we have spammers? We've hit the big leagues, boys. Uh huh, uh huh. Oh, wow, that was just one person. Holy shit. Yep. <laughs> what you do right now is, is not allowed in Switzerland. Only back windows? Ugh. Either, sp either a spammer or this guy really wants you to know he has a Kia. Yeah, I guess so. Holy shit, that's ridiculous. What's a plotter I can get with software? Max $1,700. GoPro. GoPro. Um, so you got to take software into consideration. That's going to run you at least 150. That's going to run you about 150 a month. Um, if you want a good plotter for around 17, you're, you're honestly like your budget should be about 15 to 2,500. So you're, you, you might be able to find something. Um, look on classifieds. So like Craigslist, Marketplace, they're, they're hard to come by. But every once in a while, you'll find a little gem. Somebody, somebody had a Graph Tech. Oh, no, no. It w OK, so it wasn't a Graph Tech. It's Graph Tech's cousin, uh, Vinyl Express. Vinyl Express are basically Graph Techs. I couldn't tell a difference. 
So maybe there's a difference on the motor, but they still run awesome. And all the buttons are the same. So the... Uh, what was that? Vinyl Express, Graftech, Roland, those are all good brands. Uh, Jaguar's like the cheaper brand that people are still using. So you might be able to find one newer from them for about that price. But plotters are workhorses, man. They're really for high production. They're not so much like if you're trying to do a budget plotter setup, you can, but it's, I'd, I'd search in like classifieds and stuff like that. That's where you're gonna be able to find the best type of deal. Is it better to use hand cutting versus plotter? I like hand cutting much better. Exactly, for, for accuracy. I prefer my Jaguar over my Vinyl Express. I haven't used the, the Jaguar. I've used the Vinyl Express and I came from a Graph Tech. I really like the, the Vinyl Express overall. Um, but what concerned me more was I would see more Jaguars have issues So like, like parts would break, like the, the circuit board uh, would fry or something like that. So it's obviously probably not with all of them, but you know, I just keep my ear to the ground. That's what I would see. But there's, people are using both of them, so. Plotters are a whole nother subject though. We talk about them from time to time and they drive me crazy. I tend to stay away for like, for most, most things, but if I was doing a lot more high production work, then we'd probably be using plotters. But that's not, that's not the type of tinner I wanna be. I was that, I don't like it. Where? Uh, I get my tent from Geo, Geo Shield. They have pretty boxes, and so I put pretty lights. Okay, so shrinking windshields. This one is uh, a little flatter than most, uh, but this is always gonna be a big problem spot for windshields. Because your films, like the glass starts to curve more right up in here. So this is where you're going to have the biggest issues. Um, the way that you want to handle that is, like, if you make a hard H pattern. So if you make a hard H pattern and just press all this down, you press a lot of this film here together. Don't do that. Press it lightly down. Let it float over this edge. Start shrinking at the bottom, run this up, and then you can just, you know, keep moving everything up evenly. And then as you get more into this corner, you can actually push things out sideways. So you're shrinking, shrinking, shrinking sideways, little sideways, little sideways. And now there's not as much of a finger here. I just remember there was a guy talking about a Honda Civic, so we're trying to give some good pointers for this windshield. Always wait for the film to go sideways before you press it down. So these little points right here, as you start to see those, you wanna make sure that your film is laying flat. The more points you have, uh, the more the film is trying to tell you that you need to actually shrink it 
you need to shrink it more before pushing it down. So sometimes you have to backtrack a little bit too. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. I never would have thought it's done from the outside. All the prep work and shrinking happens on the outside and then we put the film on the inside. So see these? These little peaks right here, we're getting, we're, we're, if I keep going past that, it's gonna be too much. So take the heat gun, shrink past it a little bit, so you don't have to shrink right at the peak, but just past it a little bit, and you'll watch it just go sideways. And then that's, that's how we do this whole, whole thing. It's not crease. It looked like one. Ooh, this is sticky today. Oh my god, this is way sticky. What percent do you run on your personal car? Uh, I do 35 on my windshield, and I do usually 20 on the side doors. I'm nervous, man. This is, this is like sticky. We're being very sticky today. It's very humid today in here. Dry shrink prep grabs just a little bit much sometimes. So you have two main ways that you can crease the film. One is it'll grab your material underneath. So if you have like a wet spot or it's just sticking, you can just crease the film and the other is just like we talked about already. You just don't shrink enough film. Those are really like the two, two things you gotta watch out for. Do you have video on a 2006 Highlander? Sure, I'll just wish one of those up. Hi, excuse me, customer with the 2006 Highlander. My audio is gone? Yes, it is. Thank you. We got it back now. So my little microphone, I forgot to charge it. So apparently if I don't charge it between sessions, it dies. <laughs> But it's not as good audio, so now we're on the GoPro mic, and we don't have our fancy voice commands, so. I need two, so I use a USB-C cable to charge the, the GoPro batteries, and I need uh, two, USB, two more USB-C cables to charge the wireless microphone, because there's the receiver and a transmitter. And I have them, I just forgot to bring them in, and so they didn't get to charge overnight. But with all the technical difficulties, I gave it some extra time to... I got some extra time for it to charge. Thank you, though. I'm glad that we have an on-the-fly fix for it. <laughs> Technical difficulties galore. We have, 
we have technical difficulties and then we have redundancy built into some of the systems. How do you shrink it if the windshield is sticky? Um, you just do it. <laughs> so you notice like one of the things that I was doing was like picking it up, pulling it, and like kind of finessing it a little bit more. It's not, it, I don't want to like make people think that this is the norm, it's not. There really isn't a difference between one windshield and another windshield. We put a little extra dry shrink prep on it and dry shrink prep is a little on the tacky side and it's extra humid today. So those two things together cause the shrinking to be a little bit more sticky. So it's really not the norm. It's generally a little bit more dry. What is the white outline on the windshield? That is my glass aid. So you notice I cut directly on it. This is a bit of an awkward angle for me. I should stop. I should stop. We're going. We're going for it. There we go. Called glass aid. It's thick. So you don't damage glass as you cut on it. It's also white so you can see it, so. But there's time that you have to put into application. So you like, you, you stripe the whole window. You stripe the whole window. Uh, and so that takes time. So being able to see it was very important to me. So you could make, try and make up that time. And it's, it's close. So I do it for safety. I started seeing little lines on like, shit man. I did like a back window on a BMW and I had a fine, oh, I had a, a I had a annoying line around the whole thing. And then some of my cuts were sloppy, so it looked extra bad. And I'm just like, all right, I'm done. I'm, I'm absolutely done putting my windows at risk. Some are okay, and some are not okay. And you never know until after you cut it, and you're like, oh shit, that doesn't look good. Stainless steel, doesn't guarantee that you won't scratch the glass, but it is a similar hardness to glass. So you're much less likely to scratch it. <laughs> yeah. Shrinking's like pleasing a woman. I just heard that whole thing. <laughs> Um, what's interesting about shrinking is you, you can actually read the film. So you're looking for, for patterns. And you'll just notice it looks a certain way. So like if I'm running into a spot where I'm going to crease it, I can, you can see it basically in the works. The material starts bunching together. You maybe put a little bit too much heat in one spot and then it's just like, Ah, shit. And then you gotta try and like work yourself back from that. 
So shrink it extra in other areas. I'm running pretty low on air right now. Somebody asked me, I don't know if they're hanging out, but somebody asked me about these ball locks. So this is a tent keg. This is why I like ball lock connectors. They, to me, are life changing. Oh, we're just running out of solution. So you disconnect them from your tank, take them over to your air compressor. I gotta put this on the wall. That's why I got that air compressor, not to sit on the floor. <laughs> so we're just gonna let that charge up. Now we have to click buttons. Ugh. Clicking buttons to change scenes. What kind of Neanderthals are we? How do you know how, wait, what? <laughs> Short but good stories, eight years, eight years ago, I bought a pre-cut kit from you. It's in my 09 WRX. Crazy how fast time flies, isn't it? Damn, that was a long time ago. How do you know you have enough air and solution? You do it a lot. So the rule of thumb is one ounce per gallon of water that you put in. So you, so in like a five gallon tank, you, you're gonna max it out at like four to four and a half gallons of water. Leave some space for air, cause that air is gonna expand. So that level's gonna adjust. And then you're gonna add about four ounces of slip. But if you like use that as a baseline, put the film on the glass and see if it slides around for you and tacks up the way you like it. If it doesn't, add more. It's really that straightforward. There is no like magical perfect solution and every glass, every piece of glass is going to be a little bit different. So you're just looking for a sweet spot. And then when it gets colder, it slides more, doesn't tack up as fast. And in the summer, most glass is hot. So water evaporates faster. We're still waiting for that to fill up. We probably have more than enough air in it though. Eight years, most of us were so much younger, like in our 20s. Yeah. And I remember when I started YouTube back in like 2011, I thought that was late. So look where we are now and just think forward in another 10 years. It's not a bad time. All right. It's not a bad time. All right. Good enough for me. We got about 55 PSI in here. I usually will would run them more, but I just don't want to wait. So, and then ba bam, we got our tank set back up. Good deal. So we need a rope. This one's wet. This one feels more dry to me. I've been doing so many windshields. It's kind of crazy. So like Michigan has been like five years ago, windshields were not as common. Then they brought it up in the law that that might change. And then people were like, oh, I'm gonna tip my windshield now. And it's like, the law didn't change. Oh, it's fine. So it was like, it was a, unironically one of the best marketing campaigns for window tint that I've ever seen. They just brought it up in the law. So we gotta be careful on this windshield. Like we've said at the beginning of the stream, we have a crack here <laughs> and I'm very nervous. Not so nervous on shrinking, more nervous on like squeegee, installation 
I just don't want it to spread. It's okay if it stays there. It's bad news if it spreads, but it's not my fault either. So there's that. So we've got, there's like a little bit of grease there and this is an older windshield. So if we wanna be just a little bit more sure that we're gonna be doing a good job, you're gonna to wanna to scrape it. I don't like scraping a gigantic surface with a one inch razor blade, but we will. I wouldn't try, like, so for sticky bits, clay bars aren't as effective. Scrub pads aren't as effective either. You still go to like a tried and true razor blade. People said you died in a car crash? Yeah, because I just dropped off of social media. It was too, too, it was too much for me to handle. No, it was too, like, I was frustrated, man. I was so frustrated. I wanted to do my channel. And I was like, I didn't know, like, YouTube was still a new platform, new-ish. But you know what I mean? Like, all their systems are ever-evolving. Eight years to the day? Whoa! That is crazy. Happy eight years, bro. Wait, you died in a car crash? That's what they said. I had no idea. I did not hear that rumor. <laughs> I didn't think people thought I died. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Some... Like, I was in a car accident at one point, but it was later on. <laughs> and I was okay. My escape got totaled though, but I was happy about that because I didn't want the escape. <laughs> Welcome back to the world of the living. I was brought back. Okay, so... Rehashing that whole, whole dealie. Um, it's just, so, it, it still took me a very, like years after I restarted the channel, like, a, like we've been back up for a little while now, but consistency with the channel was always a problem for, for one or two very good reasons. When you wanna make video in a work environment, and the workplace is trying to get work done, it just doesn't happen easily. I didn't have anybody to hold a camera for me. Most of the time, like when I started, I didn't actually want anybody to hold a camera either because I was nervous talking in front of a camera. So I'd shut the door and I would tell nobody to come in and then I'd try and film a video. And to this day, this is what happens when I film a video. I hit record, I say something, and then I mess up what I'm trying to say, and then I say it again, and I mess it up, and I go through like 50 takes trying to say what I was trying to say. So by the time I actually have a halfway decent take on what I was trying to say, I'm just like so frustrated <laughs> that it kind of like sometimes shows in the footage. We gotta warm up our clay bar a bit. So, I'm a, <laughs> I don't really consider myself a full YouTuber. I'm not that talented behind a camera. I'm just not that, that good. I can't read a script. I can't memorize a script. I like to just kind of fly off the cuff, but I have a lot of hard times trying to get across what I'm trying to say. And it still happens. So if I go to try and film a video, I'll have an idea and I'll be happy about that idea and then I'll go to film it and then it'll take like five hours just to shoot. 
And then you have to edit the footage afterwards. And I'm not quick at editing either. So then I have to take all the garbled bullshit and clips that I was saying and talking about and try and condense that into some form of digestible content. And then you upload it and then you watch the numbers and cross your fingers that you played the YouTube game. And then you have to do it all over again with another creative idea. So it's like, it gets exhausting. What doesn't get exhausting for as many technical issues as we have, I like streaming way more. This is like, this is my day to day. This is what happens. And working alongside other people, it's like at shops, you just bullshit all day while you're working. So running a live stream for as many hiccups as it has, we can sort through those. It's, for me, it's fun. I like it. Good times. What's the clay bar for? Should we squeegee this one more time? Let's do it one more time. Clay bar, clay bar helps pick up extra little bits of dirt. It's good for deep cleaning a piece of glass. Deep cleaning or just getting that extra shit off the glass and making lots of things stick to it. Kind of like a tack cloth would, except it's wet and very reusable. And if you use it over the defroster lines, your mind will be blown. Get a clay bar, use it on the defrosters, and watch how much shit you pull off of the defrosters. I was shocked. That's like the main reason they exist for me. They're super good for cleaning around that. Top edges are helpful. General large surfaces are helpful too. Not necessary, not like 100% necessary. So there's, you know, people use scrub pads and squeegees and stuff and those are still all great and there's no reason to change. If that works out well for you but I really like the clay bar. All right. So we are all prepped. It's time. It's time to squeegee this off, roll it up. And have a good time. Oh, I saw that windshield video that people were talking about. Where they folded the tint in half and unrolled it onto the dash. To me, I think it was pretty interesting and creative. It's nice to see that kind of stuff. I don't think I'll ever do it though. I like, for me, reverse rolling is really good because you roll it directly onto the windshield and get it in place really, really smooth. So on smaller windshields, rolling the tin up would probably work out pretty well, but on big, big windshields with short dashes, I still see myself having the same type of problems I've always been having. So for those reasons, I'm out. Why do we do this? We do this out of habit. We have two sprayers. Two sprayers.
I'm jealous of all you people that can... <laughs> Come on. Can we get it? Can we get it with our fingernail? Oh! But then there's a hair that we gotta be careful of. We did it! I still gotta use my teeth. For most... <laughs> for most removals. I have never been able to get my nail to like consistently peel a corner. It's just not my skill. Part of it is I haven't forced myself to only do that because I get frustrated. And I just like, I default back. It's like when I, le I remember like learning how to type on a keyboard. I did it with like, like this. <laughs> and then I was in a, a keyboard typing class and then they force you to put like an orange key cover. What was that? I'm a huge, I'm one of your big fans from your channel. Thanks for all that you do. Oh, thank you. Thank you, I really appreciate that. I need a bigger screen. So if I miss comments, sometimes I can read them. Do you leave the car sit inside before you pull it outside? If, uh, if I have time, but it's not necessary. It's kind of like a courtesy thing. So like this being the two doors and the windshield and I don't have anything lined up right after it. Yeah, I'll just, I'll leave it in here until they come get it. That way their car is nice and warm. They can check it out in a cool space, take some pictures. Post them share, comment, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but not 100% not necessary. If it's in a warmer space, it'll obviously just help with drying out a little bit faster, but like marginally faster in the grand scheme of things. Get that corner. So I'll start this a little bit, spray off that edge, and then we will carry this in. Mind the panels, start in the passenger side. I used to do this from the driver's side, and then I tried once from the passenger side. I've been doing it from the passenger side ever since. It's so much, it's, it's like not, easy, but it's much easier than doing everything on the driver's side. It's just getting it lined up first that can be a little bit tricky. So you get it in place and then try and you try and get it as much in place as possible and then you just follow the glass. That's what's really helped me with the reverse roll. So get that up there, grab my liner, and then just kind of, what is the percent? Uh, we're doing 50. So one of the biggest things that always mess me up on reverse rolling is how much room you have to work with at the bottom. If it pinches, sometimes I'll have to ship my whole windshield up higher. There we go. You get to that point, and then ba bam. Oh no! My chat program is fucking up again. So we're pretty lined up there. Good stuff. Now we just gotta squeegee it. So, with, with the other technique, 
Like what I used to do is just carry it in just like I do with back windows. And the other technique that I saw where they unrolled it onto the dash, the only thing I don't like about that is you have it all here, you get it in place, and then you have to try and like finesse it up onto the windshield. With a good reverse roll, you get it in place and you pull it across and it's already there unrolling super smooth onto the glass. So there's not gonna be a lot of like little crinkles in your tent. When I carried them in, I would have little crinkles sometimes in this area especially. And then the occasional like long crease from juggling a big ass piece of film. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this method. No cross needed on the front windshield? No, not really. So the way that I squeegee a lot of my back windows out, oh, you gotta be careful around there. If I'm really trying to get things locked down, I think I kind of will, but like, especially with windshields, you don't have defroster channels to like help let air out. So you'll notice it's like the best way to squeegee out a window is like a ripple effect. So with defrosters on a back window, you, you generally don't have as much big air pockets feeding back in, but I've noticed on windshields I sometimes do, where you, if you just go straight across, straight across, straight across, It's like the, there'll be like an air trail that feeds back in and I just try and do everything to keep those from happening because once you have an air trail you'll just leave behind a big streak of bubbles and the only way to take care of that is to peel it back and squeegee back over that area and then you can make it look smooth again. Getting air trapped sucks. Sometimes you can force water back into those spots, but they usually have a bunch of glue. Or not, I'm sorry, not glue. They usually are so stuck to the glass that they don't want to like pry back up. It's not dirt, but it is annoying. I've had them, what? To an aftermarket windshield and it was replaced before and they left caulking outside the dot matrix. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you get a lot of shit companies. So let's go ahead and wipe this off. So we didn't break the windshield any more than it's already broken. So that's a good thing. So we just did a uh, pro classic on the windshield and the front doors. Not as much ceramic in the winter time. <laughs> we haven't had a carbon job in a minute either, but we're getting back into things from uh, from the from having a baby. I was tripping because I didn't cut it enough or because I thought I didn't cut it enough, but it was a caulking. Yeah, so I've had quite it. God, I've done a bunch of windshields, especially lately. 
And I, like, I've run into ones where, like, the paneling, like, especially on rams, like, the, the urethane is in, uh, the, if it, it, especially if it got aftermarket replaced, it's always a little weird. And then all the windshields are set a little bit differently. So some come really close and some give you a little bit of room. There's always those, those weird tolerances. So I've been having to sometimes, like I got a lot of room on this one, but on some other windshields, I'll have to like overlap my tint on that edge because it's just slightly too wide. Cause there's a few things. There's the way that you cut it. And then the other thing is the glass on the outside is a little wider than the glass on the inside because of that curve. So your film's always gonna be a little bit wider and off from where you cut it. And that changes with how curved the glass is. So over a big wide windshield, it makes a difference. So then where your cut was perfect, then on the inside all of a sudden, it's, it's just not, not quite there. Oh, that tripped me out last time. That's just a little, that, that, that. <laughs> it's from uh, squeegeeing off the windshield, but it looked like it was something in the windshield. So let's check it over. This time, all right. I got a message restream about this. This is, this is broken. Their chat app is broken right now. Let's give Matt a thumbs up on this video. Let's give Matt a thumbs up on this video. Oh, thanks. Don't forget to take the razor blade off the dash. Thank you, 100%. What nozzle are you using on your tint keg? Uh, so the sprayer end is a, is a cone tip. It's not a fan tip, so it's adjustable. So I can turn it into a laser beam or I can turn it into a mist. So it's still like, if you turn it into a full cone, the center doesn't get as wet and it's mostly the edges. So I leave it somewhere in the middle. But the fan tips are, I like those. I just like when you really need that like hard spray, that's what I like it for. Oh my God. I can't even leave my chat app open for, for text to speech. Anytime somebody comments, it rereads like for the past half hour worth of comments. It's super annoying right now. So I've missed some good questions. That sucks. Any specific kind of precautions with tinting a windshield in a car that has a HUD? Uh, just keep everything covered up. Give him, give Matt a thumbs up. Oh, dude! Whoa! Holy shit! I got 39 likes on this video, dude. That was super awesome. Thank you. I don't know how many we got on the last one, but I don't think it was that. We're one away from 40. Come on, guys, let's go. So, I don't know if I'm, I'm assuming. There it is. There it is. We hit 40. Look at that. 41. Let's go. Oh, I appreciate that. 89 people watching, but, but only 40 likes. 44. Oh, damn, look at that go. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, desktop. There we go right here. Look at that. Holy shit, it's just ticking up. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. See that number right there? It's big, big, big thank you. This is what my streaming, or this is what my YouTube dashboard window looks like 52 what the fuck uh mean thanks dudes i really appreciate it i so i always am live streaming is pog oh fuck <laughs> it went from 60 to 59 somebody took it back I bet we'll have some shitters in chat. Thank you, thank you so much, 62. Jesus, that keeps going. 
Um, so I don't know about you guys, but sometimes with videos, people tell me to like them. And it's like, I only like them if I want to re-reference it because then it puts it in like this feed of mine. And then it used to make that list public and it was just like very, very weird. Thank you guys so much. 62, that's, uh, that's by far the most that we've gotten on a live stream anytime soon. So are you still using OBS or is this something different? No, I'm using OBS. Here, let me show you. So this is what my, you, I have to apologize, like, to you. <laughs> this is really trippy for you guys. So desktop sharing, this is what my uh, live streaming window kind of looks like, and then you have different scenes to pick from. First time watching, great way to mentally prepare before heading out uh, to work in tent. That's cool. Thank you. I'm glad you like the stream. That means a lot. <laughs> Whoever took their like back, your mom's up. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we got to put this mirror back on, and I have a special tool for that. I am the special tool. <laughs> this guy. I recommend everybody get these for re applying Ford mirrors. These are super handy. I don't, it doesn't have a name on it, so just go get it. I think it did. Equal, oh, it is made by Equalizer. These things are legitimately good. So we'll switch over. Switch over. And put this back on. So, let's make sure that is all snuggly. So we got our mirror, and the one thing that you wanna be careful is that you don't scratch the tint when you're reapplying it uh, with this tool. I've done that. I've gouged straight up from down here all the way up here with this tool. So just be careful. Just slowly get into place. And what happens is this hook goes right up into this groove here, and that bottom metal piece rests right against the tab. And it's just a vise, right? So you just keep putting pressure on it. I gotta just make sure it's been a minute since I've used this. There it goes, and then it, boom, pops straight over. So sometimes if you just try and jam it on there, which is what I used to do, you get to this point where it's really, really tight and difficult to put on the windshield. And then it's just, it, it, uh, bad things can happen if you put too much pressure on that. So that's pretty much that. We're just gonna go through and wipe down everything. I'm gonna message Restream and see what is up with the app after the fact. So that is another problem. I reinstalled the latest version of their software and it's still, it's like repeating chat messages. So it'll be fine for a little bit. And then all of a sudden any new chat message will re-trigger all these chats to be re-read. And then it takes a while to get to the new one so then I basically tune it out and miss it. And we're not just talking like three or four messages. We're talking all the way back to like somebody saying that they listened to this as a podcast, which I greatly appreciate. But that was a while ago at this point. That's what I do too, though. I listen to, to live streams like podcasts while I'm working. I always have something in the background. Cause like, tinting, tinting is its own thing, but like, you can listen to stuff, music, but like there's always something I'm trying to learn regarding what I do. So, I always have videos playing around what I'm doing, or trying to learn. Are those the Costco microfibers? Yes, yes they are. 
Untent related, but I'll try and call you sometime for advice on OBS for an idea. I have, but not sure if it can be done. So I figured you would know. Oh yeah, let me know. I love OBS questions, let's go. The, like talking about streaming and what you can and can't do, like, oh my God. There's this channel I came across, I'm so excited because it just like, that was where we got like the voice activated camera switches and stuff like that. Like it's sweet. There's so much that you can do. Um, but yeah, give me a call, I'll let you know. I don't know everything, but I've looked into it a lot. <laughs> so you tell your customers not to roll them down? Yeah, absolutely, for about three or four days. Depending on the weather, so this time four or five. Scoots McGoots, I love your name. <laughs> Rear factory tinted windows, can it be removed? No, it's actually dyed glass. So there's no coating or anything. It's literally the glass, just they changed the color of it. It's just they changed the color of it. Scoots McGoots, that is, that is a great name. Scoots McGoots. So we got one little fold here. So I, I know I built a channel around tinting. So like we mostly talk around tinting and cars and stuff. But like my real thing is streaming. Streaming and tech stuff. Well, it's streaming now. It mostly centers around tech, tech stuff. So I'm not like, it's more about like what you can do with it than actually like, yeah, I can build a fast machine and that's cool. But like, okay, what, what are the cool things that I can actually do once I have that built? So like with streaming is like, okay, streaming is here. People turn on a camera and then people go live or they do whatever they do. They edit faster, but like, Create, create, creativity with streaming is starting to happen more and more. It's not just sitting in, in front of a computer and going live. It's like creating a show. It's doing something interesting. And it's anything of that that comes out, I am like, oh, I'm so geeked about. It's really fun. So there's this channel on Twitch called, he's called Sushi Dragon. <laughs> he just moved into an 8,000 square foot warehouse and he has, it's just a playground of like, what can we do with streaming and stream effects? So he's like, he's got like two cameras strapped to him. Um, uh oh, GoPro just died. Well, at least it lets me know when it dies. I wish it would beep before it actually did. But like I was saying, Sushi Dragon on Twitch, he's like next level with streaming stuff. It's super cool. Don't drop the heat gun in the bucket of water? What, what's the problem with that? That's how you cool it, that's how you cool it down faster. Don't forget the oil chain sticker. Where did we put that? I thought we put it on, did we just put it down? I'm not gonna put it back on the tent. I'll put it on the mirror though. All right, I gotta take a picture, uh, but we're pretty much at the end of the stream. We need, we need to get 70 likes, anyone? <laughs> yes, yes, there's 75 people here and we're two away. Let's go, come on, two, we need two. Oh, now we're even. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I appreciate all the love today. So let's read some super chats. I'm sorry about the balloon today, but I just like, it was the last thing. And uh, sometimes I just, there's, there are too many things to get, to get set up. So big shout out to T-Jet and T-Jet for the super chats today. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. I always appreciate any super chats and any, oh, I just closed up my YouTube window. Why did I do that? 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 Uh, history recently closed. Let's bring it back. Did we do it? 
Do we bring it back? We brought it back. 72! We got 72 likes! <laughs> Damn, I didn't think it was possible. Thank you guys so much. That was, uh, that was a fun thing to do at the end of it. Good stuff. It's on the mirror? Oh, okay, I'm going to leave it there. I'll leave it on the mirror for them to put back on. When's the next stream going to be? Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I don't have an appointment yet, so expect like Monday or Wednesday. We should probably have something by then. But it, we're getting into like holidays now, so it's, it's a little tough. I'm hoping to have something soon. I didn't have anything planned for today when I was streaming last time, but then we got something. So we just cross our fingers and hope for the best right now. We're doing some posting, some advertising. Like we're trying, we're trying to do what we can. And sometimes it's just the opportunity needs to present itself in a, in a way where it's like, if somebody doesn't have a lot of time to wait, I'm not going to stream because I just like, it literally took up an hour to get to this point. So I got to let them know that their car is all set. Because this, <laughs> unfortunately, this burns off a lot of extra time. So it takes a good, like streaming anything seems to take like a good half day out of the schedule. So... All right, so big thanks to everybody who hung out today. Uh, I greatly appreciate all you guys here. This was a fun show. I got to figure out what's going on with my text-to-speech, but we sorted some tech issues out, and it looks like everything was running well. I'll have to look at the audio and stuff. But it, it seemed to, like, it seemed to go well, so. Yes, cars for the medias. <laughs> yeah, I know. I try and remember. I remember by forgetting a bunch of times and then beating myself up afterwards. So, thank you guys for... Ah, oh, I forgot to finish my end screen again! You guys see? Watch. It's just this. It's ugly. Okay, we are still at our appointment. We should pay you via cash app. Oh, okay. So they're going to just take a bit. They're going to take a little bit to get here. So that's kind of funny. I'll hang out for a few more minutes, all right? Actually, or should I just leave because I said I'm leaving and now it's like hype's over. Why did it turn on? Oh, shoot! That's why. T-Jet, T-Jet with the $4 super chat. If your Ford falls apart, the mirror, the mirror sure won't. <laughs> the mirror will be the last thing to go. The whole car will explode. The windshield will fly through the air and crash on the ground, and the mirror will still be there on a broken windshield. Good deal. So they had some time to do some stuff, so that's cool. I don't, I don't feel like I'm under pressure. But my GoPro's dead, so we can't, like, walk around. Well, I could start it back up, but I don't know what we do. I'm probably just burning time now, so I should go. I should go. Can we look at the Facebook group? Maybe we should look at the Facebook group. Let's look at the, you know, let's do, I've, you know, I got a couple minutes. I've kind of wanted to do this. I've kind of wanted to, like, look at the Facebook group on stream. Wow, I need a higher resolution monitor for sure. Because sometimes I like answering things out of, the, out of the group. But I would rather do them when I can talk. So, like, this will be a little shout out for the window tint stuff group. God, this does not size well, though. Desktop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like this one. See? Real quick, let me take my chat window. There we go. Desktop. 
Look at my post about the Fiat. We could look at your post. Where's the search? Search groups. See, this is, this is my problem with Facebook and on this monitor. So this is a pretty low res monitor. So Facebook is all kind of out of whack right now in terms of sizing. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this isn't even my group, that's why. That's just groups. Oh, there we go. We got there. Whoa, we have 9.3. Oh, we went up. Okay, now we can search. This is the Facebook group. Window tint stuff. Uh, what are we looking for? Fiat. This one? Yeah, this one. This is your post. Hi guys, I'm worried about side sliding windows. How to take the perfect shape cut on the corners. Ooh, oh shit. That does not look fun. That doesn't look fun at all. See how this bows? How do, is there a way to like zoom in? Can you zoom in on a desktop? You can kind of do this. That helps a little bit. So you see how this bows here? So all this, I'm noticing buttons on the back window. That sucks. I get those on some Ford trucks. I hate those. I don't, the easiest way would be to just take the glass out and cut around it. Then you got these things. I don't have a great view of how these look. And then this cut is weird. So what you would want to do is cut this bottom first and then cut this side and just leave this kind of corner hanging. You don't really have to necessarily just go straight up, although you probably could on this one because it's so connected. Cut from here to like up here, slide it over, and then cut this edge and slide it back a little bit and then finish up your top and then connect the dots on this because this probably slides out a little bit. This doesn't look fun. I am so sorry. I don't have a lot of good pieces of advice on that one. There's some really weird foreign cars uh, that we just don't get over here in the States. So if I go back one more time and back, is that, oh, that brings me to the group. Oh, I saw this yesterday and I wanted to comment. This is actually a really good question. And I don't have a great answer, unfortunately. But one question, I've been at a few shops asking for a chance to start. Um, applying as a window tint installer, installer is harder than I thought. I know you need experience, but you need to start somewhere too. Um, most shops don't want new people because of the time that they have to invest into them. Um, and that really, really sucks. So getting started with window tint it can be really, really difficult. Um, the best thing that I can suggest is to keep practicing in your own time and just try and build up your own client base and forget about working at a window tint shop specifically. Because actually a lot of tint shops, like you can, <laughs> I mean, I know that's kind of like being a window tinter and then go working at a shop, but I mean, window tinting is like one of those weird things where it's like you kind of just do better off on your own. Um, but if you are looking to get into a shop, you really need to build up some experience because on their side, they're trying to protect themselves too. So they don't want to put a lot of time into you because they're worried that you're just going to leave or they're going to put a lot of wasted time into you and you're not going to work out as an employee. So it's just kind of a, it, it's kind of a tough deal. Um, it's it, much easier to just kind of start it on your own and go from there. Uh, do we not have our alerts here? Do we not have our alerts? Where? There it is! Daniel Reyna with the 10. Thank you, buddy. How you doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry, the balloon is gone for right now. It'll be back, it'll be back next stream. I just totally forgot to set it up. But thank you so much for the 10. Oh, damn! It came in again. We gotta wait for it to pop up. Where is it? It should be here. There it is! Daniel Reyna was robbed of the engine sounds. I know. I know, I'm sorry. But it's back, look at that. We gotta add a, a thing back to... Can we just copy? 
and then can we go back to the desktop and then can we just paste? That might have fixed it. I think I just added it back into this scene. But it's tough. Hey, look, it's me. Hi. Oh, I saw this this morning. This was great. <laughs> this is... This is how to shrink, <laughs> how to shrink a back window using a craftsman heat gun because apparently they die really quickly. He said it lasted for like three or four months. Just fucking toss. Anything, anything to watch out for on a Kia Forte 2014? Uh, no, Kias are pretty straightforward. Nothing, nothing comes to mind. You should do pretty good. Kias are actually one of the easier cars to tint. This is how to shrink a 21 Camry. Oh, these are interesting, actually. Um, oh, he does it with a torch, too. Oh, this is quick. Well, we can't see it. Your arm's in the way. So this area is going to be way easier right down here. But... They curve right up in this area, right up here. And they make it a little bit more challenging. It's kind of funny to me. I appreciate videos a lot, but window tinners don't invest into a simple phone tripod. <laughs> Get one. Get one for sure. Because like now we can't really see this corner. These are the trickiest parts of it. It's cool, though with the torch and the way that he's holding it. I want to see how he switches to the other one. Most shops fear you're going to learn later. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Most shops fear that you're going to learn and then, like, leave. Windshield question. Does the heat from the defrosters affect the glue? No. No, you're fine. It's not, it's, that's a film manufacturer thing. So it's like they need to make their, they know there's defrosters. So you don't have to worry about telling people to not use their defrosters or anything. It's perfectly fine. If you have a film that fails, it's the film. That was cool. I wish he put up the camera better. That's been one of my challenges. How many cars can you tint with one roll? Ooh, you can tint a lot. You can actually tint eight full cars with like a 36. So if you get a 60 inch, cut it down to like 36, 24, or 40 and 20, you can do about 12 cars. Which you guys gotta remember when you're shopping around for film. Film cost is usually not that bad starting out. It gets more expensive into like ceramics and stuff. Would a 20 inch roll work for a Jeep? Uh, yes, yes it would. What's the point of shrinking the film? Well, if we go back up to the shrinking video, so you'll see that the film doesn't lay flat on the glass at all. And then you have to get it to lay flat. So you shrink it, and then it forms nice and flat to the window. That's the only reason to do it. How much do you charge for a full car in carbon and an SUV in ceramic? Uh, that's going to depend on your market area a little bit. Um, here, personally, I do 300 uh, without the windshield on a sedan and carbon, and 395 for ceramic. And then windshields are like an additional, like 160 in carbon and 200 in ceramic. Thank you for the videos. Gives me a lot of useful ideas. A lot of tinners don't let you see their secrets. Yeah, we have no secrets here. <laughs> We just, we spoil everything. Are these good? Nine millimeter, black snap blades, black high carbon. No, well, for top edges, yes, but don't cut on glass with carbon blades. Black or silver, doesn't matter. If it says carbon, do not cut directly on the glass with them. You will scratch it. 100%. Thank you for your, oh, no, I read that one. What grade of steel wheel do you recommend? Steel wheel. Oh, steel wool? Steel wool I don't use. I don't like it. 
it leaves little bits behind. If you do use a, like a double lot steel wool, I'm converting to GeoShield as soon as my global supply runs out. Oh, very cool. Welcome to the family. Oh, this was my this was my bad live stream, unfortunately. Oh, I should leave that video up. Just so I can see what it looked like. Because I deleted it immediately off of YouTube and then I was like, shit, I should have looked at it. What do you guys do besides tent? I do 12 volt installs, camera, stereo, lighting. That's a lot. That's a lot of, that's a jack of all trades right there in the automotive industry. Here's a gloss black satin 21 Durango SRT. That's cool. I don't have the patience for this. Mainly because it's like I'd rather, like I specialize in window tinting. But you can see here, he had to remove the bumper. He had to remove the handles. He had to remove a bunch of stuff to do this. Good work. <laughs> it's a cool video, I like that. What do you use to clean off tough glue on a back window? Uh, good question. This stuff right here. So this is uh, awesome, LA is awesome. You can find it at the dollar store, you can find it at hardware store, or like Home Depot I think and stuff, some stores have it. Um, this stuff, it works great for glue. The other industry thing is uh, ATR. ATR is super great. If you can get the film off, you can get the glue off, no problem. The hardest part is always getting the, the film off the glass, and you use that with a steamer. So even if your steamer leaves a bunch of glue behind, that just depends on how it sticks, right? So then spray that and use a, use a scrub pad. Use either the white 3M scrub pads or use um, what kind of scrub? What, uh, the blue ones. Blue ones are also good. They say they're glass safe. Scotch blue ones. Not green. Don't use the green ones. I don't remember if you tell your customers if they can roll the windows down right away or not. No, I, love, I make them leave them up still for like four or five days. So I can, I, I, if they accidentally did it, I tell them don't worry about it. If you accidentally roll down your windows and something happens, I'll still take care of you. But advise them to leave them up. This time of year when it's colder, like four or five days, uh, when it's warmer, usually like next day is fine, a couple days. Uh, and then we got to go back to, all right, we're going to be ending in a minute. This is fun though. I always wanted time to do this. Anybody ever have their solution, baby shampoo and water make streaks on door panels? How do I clear it up? Uh, just actually it's, I do. I have that happen, uh, often enough. Just take your, just take a towel, take more slip solution, spray it on the towel, and wipe over, and it'll take it out. If it looks like it still leaves some streaks, just give it a little time to dry, and then it'll smooth out. It'll, it'll be completely gone. I also use a mild degreaser. Yeah, there's different, there's different things like that for sure. Clean soapy water so it won't stain the columns. Yeah, 100%. Have you ever used the back, black trash bag method for tint removal? I've tried, but we can't depend on it for most of the year. That's been my problem. It gets cold. So there's so many tinters that say, just do a black trash bag and put it outside. Motherfucker, it's freezing outside. You just want it to freeze? Like, and then we have plenty of gray and cloudy days so it doesn't get hot enough. The tried and true method for me is always to use a steamer, let it, let it bake for a little while, or try and go a little quick, like, you know what I mean? Just give it a little bit of time, keep that steam close, and try and peel it away, and whatever happens with the glue is what happens, spray it, scrub it off. On the LA's bottle, it says not to use on glass. Why do you think it would say that? Does it really? Do not use concentrated on glass. 
<laughs> ah, fuck. Ah, fuck. Get ATR. Um, you can use, it says not, like, concentrated. So you can actually dilute this if you want to. Um, I haven't had it be an issue, but where I could see it being a problem is maybe staining the glass if it was, like, the glass is really hot and you just spray it right on a hot glass. But I would always suggest trying to cool the glass down a little bit before you spray it on. Because this, like any chemical, if you spray it on a hot surface, it'll evaporate really fast and you won't be able to breathe. It'll like knock your ass out. But yeah, they're, they're perfectly fine. I have a final question I'm gonna strip. Uh, I'm gonna do a strip on my windshield. How to ensure a straight line when I'm laying the tape. Oh, uh, don't worry about the top edge. Just cut as like on that border. Give yourself a little bit of a gap. And then uh, for a flat edge on the bottom, use the factory edge of the tent. That's the only way you can do windshield strips, really. Or that's the main way. You need a nice flat line at the bottom, so use the factory edge on the tent. Don't, you're not going to hand cut a windshield strip. It's going to be all types of wonky. All righty. And with that, that's group recap. Although he just did a windshield. Oh, it's a 15 minute video. We can't, we can't watch that whole thing. That was fun. I want to do that again sometime, but we're going to have to end the stream. Like I said a little while ago, um, I was just got to make sure this is 100%. Um, I'm probably going to, I'm going to, no, I'm going to leave it here. But this was fun. I want to do this again. Uh, if you want to join the group, if you want to join the group, this is where you can join the group. Join the group. Be part of the conversation. It's so much easier for me to answer questions when I can actually talk and just illustrate. It's so hard for me to type out a thought. So that was fun. I appreciate this. This is good. Maybe we'll be able to do this again sometime. But that's where you can join the group. Get the book, The, Won the Wonky Donkey for Your Baby. <laughs> I'll look into it. I got, I got a baby book for the baby. But we'll have to get many more. But the one I got was the ABCs of gaming from the Linus Tech Tips channel. It was super cute that they just put it out. Buick tomorrow? <laughs> no, hopefully not. No, she was, she was very happy with it. So we should be good on that one. All right, boys, thank you so much for hanging out. Wow, we actually did hit 80 likes on this video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. This was super fun. Thank you for the super chats, of course, to T-Jet and Dana Reyna. And uh, next stream, we're hoping for Monday or Wednesday. So keep your notifications on. And then I will see you guys, of course, in the next one. Thank you so much. Well, goodbye.